In the first step, we'll be looking at the so-called list of hazard-related use scenarios. So that sounds kind of long, and it is, but um, I promise you the list will actually be fairly short, usually, unless you're developing very complex software. So maybe as a quick um, starting point for the usability evaluation, 80% of the work in becoming compliant with this usability standard is actually doing one final user test with your product um, before it's done. So that has to be a pretty much a version which is almost identical to your production version. Best case, it's identical with the released version. And you need to invite at least five test users to test it. And I'm not going to talk too much about that here. I'm just mentioning it now so you have the right context and you know what the most time intensive activity will actually be and what we're doing for this usability standard. And you don't get lost in documentation along the way. Now, to basically lay the groundwork for doing this user test, um, the first thing you have to do is write down this list of hazard-related use scenarios. And that's what we're going to do right now. So if you head over to the website, um, then you see this template, uh, list of hazard-related use scenarios. And oh my god, it's been updated April 20th, so just very recently. And it's a very, very simple template. So it's essentially just a table, right? It's, it has one section and it has a table. And the table is also called hazard-related use scenarios. So what I did here is, as tables usually are better resembled in spreadsheets, I just copied the columns to a spreadsheet, to a Google Sheet, and that's all I did. So I think I would, I would recommend that you also do this because it makes sense. Now, um, what you need to document in this is your use scenarios, which, surprise, um, are hazard related. So what would that be? Um, you have to consider that your risk analysis needs to be mostly done for this first. So you need to have some usability risks um, written down in your risk table. And quick introduction to the Magic COVID application, which we're documenting, which we'll be talking about here, which we also were documenting in the risk table is we're just imagining we develop an app which um, can be used, um, which can be downloaded and then can be used to like take pictures of people's faces and then it gives you an assessment whether that person has COVID or not. So it's like the magic COVID diagnosis um, photo app because it does it based on a photo of the person's face and it gives like the super final diagnosis basically saying, okay, a person is like COVID positive or negative. So, so that's, that's the imaginary app which we came up with to document. And we'll also be thinking about that here. And the, um, maybe like we have one very obvious usability risk here is people not understanding the diagnosis output, right? So if it, if it shows um, COVID positive and there's like, a, there's like a green symbol with a check mark, then that could be confusing because maybe a green symbol with a check mark would be like the person's fine and healthy, but COVID positive would actually mean um, that person is uh, sick, right? So we would enter this and say, okay, user group, who uses this app? Uh, probably physicians, so check your intended use. And description would be um, uh, diagnosis result is misunderstood. And then you could, yeah, you could like elaborate on that, like the app, the app shows um, a result whether a patient is COVID positive or negative. Um, the user could misunderstand this result, like IE or EG mistake a COVID positive result with an actual negative result. So this is terrible phrasing. We need to like rephrase this. Like the user could misunderstand this um, result due to poor usability, usability EG. Um, the COVID positive result would be um, would be understood as negative result. So again, this is about the actual usability risk, right? So this is not about your app showing wrong results, but about the user misunderstanding the result you showed them and subsequently um, initiating the wrong medical um, action due to that. So. In this sense, um, you have uh, the COVID positive result, which is displayed like correctly in the sense of that it says COVID positive, 
but your user would be like, yeah, this is like the patient's fine and go home, okay? So this is what it's about. Moving forward in the table, you would describe what app state um, your application would be in um, or what sort of environment would need to be um, required for this to happen. And this would be like pretty trivial. Like obviously the app would, be need in, would need to be installed. Like app is installed, installed, and then like um, COVID test is done and result is displayed, right? So this is, this is just like how would you, what would you need to do to bring the app into this state, which, um, which is described in the description um, column on the left side. And then the tasks would be which tasks does a user um, need to fulfill to actually, well, successfully um, go through this, uh, this, this use scenario. And um, so you would just write, some down, write down some tasks, for example. So this is the physician, right? The user, user group in the second column, um, like, um, take, like launch app, um, take picture, picture of patient, um, who may have COVID and then like view results or result and finally interpret result and initiate or interpret result correctly and initiate medical well whatever intervention or or like at, and arrive at medical um, decision okay or conclusion or conclusion Okay, and the acceptance criteria here is, um, that's probably like the most important, right? The acceptance criteria is the physician has, has actually understood what the app was showing them. So physician has understood, um, understood the COVID result. Yeah, that's, that's all there is, right? Has displayed, has understood the displayed. Let's say this COVID result. Okay, so that's the acceptance criteria um, for this hazard related use scenario. So this should be like a good starting point for actually defining um, tests, which we'll be doing in one of the next few videos. But before we do that, we should maybe come up with a second hazard related use scenario. And um, maybe, so we obviously already got like the most impactful one in our first, um, in our first case. Maybe another one we could come up with is because this app is about taking pictures of people's faces. And maybe I'm like a clumsy um, physician and I always like take crappy pictures or like always like the autofocus, it's, it's kind of out of focus and the pictures are incredibly crappy. And that's why the whole app is kind of useless because the picture which enters the application or like the machine learning model um, is already crappy, right? So maybe this is a usability concern because handling phones and taking pictures is very difficult. So how would we, how would we describe this? Like physicians, again, this user only has physicians as users, so there isn't like that much of a different user group. Description is like um, taking or like taking taking pictures or pictures pictures could have um, bad quality. Or like taking pictures with a phone could oh god take, taking pictures with a phone could could lead to lead to um, pictures of bad quality entering the software okay i'm not going to add a description for that so the app state in the environment would be and again because this is hazard related you will need to describe this associated hazard in your risk table and an associated hazard would be, and I think we're actually describing it, is like, um, yeah, like crappy images enter the application and then that leads to a wrong COVID result. So uh, false positive or false negative. So someone who has COVID will maybe be identified as healthy, which is um, not good. So app state here is pretty much the same, right? App is installed, app is installed. Um, and maybe a bit earlier. So we're not doing a COVID test in this in this stage yet. So we're um, we're like launching the COVID photo feature, acquisition feature, whatever, right? So um, how about typing better today? Okay, launching. 
So the idea is you launch the app and then you hit like a big button, which is like, okay, take a picture now. And then it pops up this camera thing. So that's, that's how you bring the app into the state. And the tasks are like really simple. It's like, I mean, um, launch, like launch app two is like launch, um, COVID photo acquisition three, like take photo of patient. Okay. And acceptance criteria is like, um, Photo of good quality is taken off patient. Okay, so that's essentially what um, what you're dealing with. And I confess, the magic COVID um, picture machine learning application is maybe not the best example here because it doesn't really have that many different hazard related use scenarios. Maybe one other example which I can give is from my past company, Vara. And this is public information. Luckily, that's why I can give it. Is it's in mammography screening, right? So screening for breast cancer, and the software gives the radiologist an indication whether a breast cancer could be present on the current image the radiologist is looking at. And there, you you well, you essentially have two different hazard-related use scenarios, right? Because um, you have the app doing a false positive and a false negative assessment. So there's something in the image which is probably cancer, but the application maybe says like, hey, this is totally fine. And now the radiologist has to actually catch that, right? So that's a usability question more or less. The radiologist has to be like, hey, I checked the image and um, there's a discrepancy between the image and the predicted result. Same for the false negative case, right? So this is like a, this is like a usability thing and this would map much better to this table. So you would have, you would have a column, um, absent environment would be like, okay, you have a false negative diagnosis in the system and the radiologist sees this output from the system, but sees this picture, which, and there's a discrepancy, right? So that's the app state. And the task would be like, yeah, blah, 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 do your radiology report. And the acceptance criteria is very important here. That would be like, okay, you've, you've noticed that there was a discrepancy and actually identified um, the output of the software as wrong. So I think that's a really, really good example. Um, Again, not uh, not as good uh, or better than our ma magic COVID application, but that's essentially all there is. Moving forward, I think um, one thing you should maybe keep in mind is you shouldn't just only focus on the list of hazard-related use scenarios. So this is just enough to fulfill the 62366, but um, the 13485, so the quality management standard, it actually is a bit broader and it says you should validate all of your software and validation is doing like a user test. So in my experience, this would be like the bare minimum, which would not get you killed in an audit, but you should maybe include some of the more core features of your application, even though they may not be hazard related, just to have like a good feeling for um, people actually can use this application in the right way. Because again, this will be the, f like the groundwork for actually doing a user test later on. All right, so talking about the user test, we'll be uh, talking about that pretty soon. But before we get there, we'll be talking about like formative evaluation. Um, so let's see what that is next.